Aloha, Aloha stickies. stickies! Welcome back to another episode of the Stick with Kaji podcast. I'm Loanne. And I'm Sean. And you can follow me on Instagram here. I think I finally got it. Yay! So this episode, um, I know we skipped an episode because last episode we were talking about the wedding, but now we're going to go back to the topic of how I came to America. If you want to know part one, it is up here or also in the description below of how I escaped my country, Vietnam, and made it on a island, a little small island on the coast of Malaysia. Such a suspenseful story that where you stop in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) I can't wait to hear the the ending of this series. All right. So this episode, we left off with um, my family made it to the island called Pulau Bidom. It's a very, very tiny refugee camp, you know, on the side of Malaysia, not the main island, but just a little island on the side where the Malaysian government had convert this island into a Vietnamese refugee camp. So people are here waiting to apply to different countries like U.S., Canada, France, Australia, you know, other countries who would accept them. Are you ready to hear the rest? Yes, I can't wait. Yeah, what's the island life look like? <laughs> yeah, very curious. At least it's better than the, uh, how the, the, the days that you were spending time on the boat, right? Yeah, so let's do a little recap on the boat, right? So if you guys don't know, the, the journey on the boat to escape Vietnam to the island is very dangerous, right? A lot of people died at sea due to pirates, due to starvation, no water, overcrowding. It was a very dangerous journey, but my mom and dad, you know, decided to take that risk because even though we were living in Vietnam, they thought that risk was worth it for us to go to a different country. So if you can imagine, you know, the mindset that my parents had to be in to decide that was the better route, right? Mm. Because when we talked about last episode, I can't imagine taking that step with mm-hmm. little kids. Do you think it's easier or harder to come to U.S. or to, to, uh, for the, to be an immigrant to the U.S. from Vietnam? Now? Now compared to back then. Which now, one's well, it's easier now, I think, because back, you know, the refugee camps, they mainly closed down in the 1990s or the early 2000s. So you can't even go to those campsites anymore. Now you just have to wait to be accepted to the country. But in order to be accepted to the country, you have to have sponsored. And a lot of people who, when I say sponsored, is like your family members, you know. So you have to know somebody, some sort of family member that lives in these countries and then we can apply for them to come over. Yeah, so somebody has to be the first one to, 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 be in, to live in that country then. Right, yeah. yeah. So I want to pick it up from when we left Vietnam. You know, I forgot to mention, it was really sad for my extended family because we didn't tell anybody that we left. Mm-hmm. The reason we can't is because, you know, if, if, so, if we tell people, right, what if somebody accidentally told somebody or the words got out, right? You want to keep it on the down low. Uh-huh. And plus, they don't even tell you when we're going to leave. You know, you get like last minute call saying, hey, you know, you got to go tomorrow sort of situation. Right. So you didn't have the proper saying goodbye to your families when you guys leave in the country. Right. So later on, I heard, you know, my my grandma cried because she never got you know, to say goodbye to her son or her her grandkid, which which was me. Mm -hmm. She was really sad about it. But, you know, we were really blessed that we made it to this island. So so let's continue on this island life. Must be a happy island. Well, people have called it Hell Island. So you decide. (laughs) This island was, uh, first of all, it was overcrowded, right? Uh. So the island was meant for only 4,000 refugees. And there was a point in time, not when I was there, this has happened before, where over 40,000 people were on there. It was considered... They're all from Vietnam? Yes. Oh, wow. All from Vietnam. And it was considered the most dense populated place on earth during that time. Wow. So you can imagine 40,000 people living in this little small area. I want to say small, it's the size of a football field, but that's still a pretty small space, uh-huh. I think, for 40,000 people. How right? can you... Yeah. Uh, 
get the, the water supply? Is it like a lake or a river? Okay, so good question. Mm -hmm. So when we're on this island here, the Malaysian government did provide resources. So they would give you every day, you would come and uh, you would line up, mm -hmm. right, and collect some resources. So we would get a gallon of water per day per person. Now that might seem like a lot, but this gallon of water is meant for you to cook, to drink, and to bathe in. Oh, I see. Well, bathe in, yes. and I use all the whole gallon <laughs> just for that. Right. So a lot of time, my dad and my uncle, my uncle was on this journey with us. They would really try to conserve water. Uh -huh. So they would rinse themselves off, you know, on the beach. Mm. And then they would limit themselves to like a small cup of water. Uh -huh. And they put this cup of water, you know, on their head and just let it drip down their body. <laughs> and that's all they let themselves use to clean off. Wow. The reason why they did that is because during that time, my mom didn't know, but she was actually pregnant with my sister. I see. So they wanted to, you know, preserve all the water that we have for, you know, me because I was only four at that time. Uh -huh. And then my mom who was, you know, pregnant. So, right. and then they did give us food, right? So every day we would collect some sort of protein, like, um, chicken or oh. some fish uh -huh. in some side uh, vegetable dishes uh -huh. but right so but it does get repetitive you know i mean we can't complain because it's free food we really appreciate it but if you imagine you know it's just like the same type of food every day for eight months right can you get your own food like go to like fishing or like, find some vegetables on the island there is so basically you're waiting on this island you know and then some people were there for years uh -huh. so what they decided to do is they started farming uh -huh. right so they are able to grow their own fruits and vegetables uh -huh. so they some of them were nice where they would share with other people uh -huh. and then some of them because again everybody was really poor some people would uh if you can give them money then they'll They'll gotcha. also um, let you have it, you know, for like a small right. fee. Mm -hmm. So on the island, there were lots of rats. There are rats running everywhere. There's infested with mosquitoes. Yeah, I remember getting bitten all the time. My two least favorite <laughs> animals and insects. Ooh. So since my mom was pregnant, a lot of people surrounding us was actually um, giving us extra food and water. Oh, that's nice. So they did build a whale for the community, but it's a kind of an uphill area. So I remember my mom having to just walk up the hill to carry like pails of water. Uh -huh. And I remember I'm, I'm just, I, I tried to ask my mom if I can help her. Uh -huh. You know how it is when you're four or five, you think you can do it. Uh -huh. So I remember asking my mom, I can carry that water for you. <laughs> and of course she's like, no, you can't. <laughs> But everybody there on the island has some sort of job, right? right? You know, to help the community. But since my mom was pregnant at that time, she didn't really have to um, to really work that much. Uh -huh. But my dad, because he used to be a teacher, again, he, we got lucked out. He didn't have to do like the manual labor that other people had to uh, contribute to do. He just worked in the, the school, if you can call it that. Uh -huh. So it's just an area... Um, you know, he did the best he could to teach the kids of what he known, uh -huh. but it's not like a formal education school with, you know, lesson plans written out or anything like that. Right. So it's just a place mainly just for kids to keep their mind off, right, uh -huh. of this hard life that they're in. Right. During that time, um, my grandpa was already in America and um, he had sent over $50. Mm -hmm. He, you know, it's, again, that's a lot of money for him during that time. But at the same time, he was kind of scared to send out a lot of money because he was afraid it wouldn't make it to us. Uh -huh. He just wasn't sure, you know, how he's going to get into this little island. Right. So he saved up $50, he gave it to us. And we were really happy because with that money, you know, my mom was able to, to buy extra fruits and vegetables for us, uh -huh. right? We took some pictures there on the island. Again, taking pictures cost money. So my mom had to, you know, we had to save up money just to get some pictures taken. Uh -huh. um, and w a lot of the pictures, I don't have any with me on this island, but my mom was like, a lot of the pictures, you know, if you 
if you take the pictures in black and white, it costs less than if you take the pictures in color. So a lot of pictures that we had was just like black and white pictures. And she was saving the colored pictures for special moments. Got it, got it. Yeah, that's what I was wondering when I was looking at your childhood pictures. I go, I wonder why it's black and white. We're almost the same age. Cost extra, Sean. Ah, Okay. Okay. Even my mom's wedding pictures, apparently... They're mainly all black and white. Because That's probably they, just a uh, just a <laughs> generation. No, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, but you know they could have gotten color then too. It's just my oh, mom and okay. dad was like they can't afford so many colored pictures. Oh god, god, god. So on the island, you know, because I was a kid then, so I don't remember a lot of the hardship, right? Uh-huh. That my parents remember. All I kind of remember was I remember just running around, right? Um, just in nature, collecting rocks. Have you ever seen those rocks that when you put together, it sparks? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Those are my favorite memory. To this day, you know, I'm, I'm wondering where can I get those rocks? Were you able to actually start the fire with it? No, I was never able to, but oh. I just remember it sparks and it was the coolest thing in the world. I don't think I ever found those rocks. Wow. Have you ever have you ever played with them? No, I no. mean I never found it. So <laughs> oh. no, but I always watch it on the TV, like those like, you know primates. Yeah. That's how they started the fire, and I always wanted to try and see how <laughs> difficult it is to start a fire without any lighters or you yeah. know match or. Right. Huh. That's impressive. Interesting that they have that. Right. Is it usually around where it's a volcanic uh, areas? I don't know. I'm assuming so. I just right. remember just uh, just me and a whole bunch of other kids. We're just finding rocks and we were just like, you know, rubbing it together. It was the coolest thing. Those are your toys. Yes, exactly. (laughs) And then, you know, because we're on a little island, I remember going to the beach all the time. So when we moved to Hawaii, it was kind of cool. You know, obviously not the same, but kind of reminds me of island life a little bit. Uh You know, of the vague memories that I had. I'm excited for the kids to grow up in Hawaii. Kind of give me the same vibe as... um, the fun things that I experienced back on the little island. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what, uh, how many kids were there? Uh, did, did you have like, a group of friends that you had in island? I don't remember. I remember there was an abundance amount of kids. Uh-huh. So I wasn't the only kid that got to escape Vietnam. So that was a good thing that I had some friends. So another fun thing that I remember was we were staying in these long huts, right? So each hut has you know, like 20 people in this hut, just like a small room. But Mm -hmm. there was a a hut next to us Mm -hmm. that had like an older couple in it. And they'd been here for a while. They had, I wouldn't say they had a lot of money, right? Because everybody here was poor. But uh, the couple did had some money brought in, you know, from like their family members. Mm -hmm. So I remember every day, um, this lady, she would ask me to buy her coffee. So you can get coffee on the island. So you can go to the shop and buy coffee. So basically, I would, she would give me a little cup, uh-huh. and I would go and get her coffee, you know, and bring it back. And she would give me like 10 cents or something like that. And I would save up that money uh-huh. to buy candy. Huh. So I had candy there, apparently. <laughs> So on the island, my dad, um, in order to apply to the countries, you have to take a test, right? So if you want to apply to America, you have to be able to speak basic English oh. and know some facts about America. That must be difficult because you never lived there before, right? Right. So they teach you English on the island. So my oh. dad would work during the day as a teacher. And then when he comes back in the evening, he and my uncle would go to English uh, class. Uh huh. Because, you know, if you don't know how to speak English, you cannot go to America. That was one of the requirements. You Just basic English, you know, just how to say hello and goodbye. How are you? You know. OK, that you can learn in one day. Hey, it was hard. OK, <laughs> I don't. And then and then the American facts, you know, how like when you when you apply for citizenship, uh-huh. you have to know when was America created, you know? Yeah, those things are a little bit difficult. Yeah, I'm not good at learning <laughs> histories. Yeah. Yeah, so my uncle and my dad did it during the time. So after eight months there, we applied and we got accepted to America. Nice. But you can't just go right away. Uh-huh. They, so what happens is after eight months, you get transported to another island. It's like a transit island, another uh-huh. refugee transit camp. So everybody on this island, you know, 
is destined to go somewhere that it got, it got uh -huh. accepted to somewhere uh -huh. so some people will go to america some people will go to canada australia gotcha. it's just like um a temporarily refugee camp that's also in malaysia yeah so the refugee camp that we got sent next was called sun guy bc it's like a like a territory uh -huh. and um, i want to say it wrong so i'm going to say it to you guys by the phone so it's territory in the capital of Malaysia called Kuala Lumpur, and I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. So we're in this other camp here while we wait for all our paperwork to be finalized uh -huh. and go to America. My uncle actually, um, it took him three months. So he was staying in this second campsite with us for three months, and then he got accepted and all his paperwork went through and he's able to go. So it would have been the same for us. The problem was my dad got really sick. Oh, no. We're not sure. When I asked my mom, she doesn't know the exact medical problem, but he had some sort of lung infection oh. and it was pretty contagious. So, you know, he can't go and they had to test us constantly, too. Gotcha. He's been not really lucky for throughout this uh, right. escape. huh? He in the last episode, he fall down when they, you guys were trying to rush into the, uh, the escape boat and yeah he fall down and he hurt himself and now he's sick right uh. so we actually had to stay in this new campsite for an extra year oh uh, what yeah because of that right. oh wow it was um i think it was like 10 months to a year but it was pretty long longer wow. than any of us had hoped for you know he has to be clear of whatever he had you know for us to to go to america well so, at least they didn't really cancel the acceptance right, right? that yeah. would have been the worst case so yeah so this new island um the difference between the other island this island was that the the other island they let you cook your own food oh this mm -hmm. island because it's supposed to be like a temporarily fast thing mm -hmm. they don't let you cook oh no but then you guys stay there for a year right so they did provide us food, you know, they, they, every day they would come and give us food to eat. Like, you know, um, but my mom just remembered unlimited rice, unlimited instant noodle. Oh, um, they, that's unlimited. Well, I want to say unlimited. It was like two package of instant noodle per person. Okay. That's not unlimited. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's a lot. You okay. know what I mean? After a while, you just get tired. Got it. Got it of the instant noodle there's only so much oh, that's you what can you eat. get every day right yeah oh you still hungry okay get another <laughs> one yeah another instant noodle yeah okay so here's some rice again rice was great right we love we grew up with rice but the problem is it's just like a whole bunch of rice and then like a little protein you uh -huh. know i still would still be okay with that but yeah <laughs> now i can see why because uh, you know when i first met loanne she doesn't like eat rice too much and then i've been <laughs> thinking of what's the reason like you know rice is great like that's the best thing ever but now i know why the kind of ground bottom of it i think because she ate so much rice when she was little she's so sick of it now i feel like even last episode too i feel like sean's my therapist <laughs> telling me hey, why i didn't act have the, the way i do you could eat as much rice as with me right now i have to limit my <laughs> rice eating portion because loan doesn't want to eat that much you can still eat okay don't let me stop you i just feel weird like when we go to sushi restaurant loan just only eating the top of the sushi it's kind of rude to the sushi chef i'm sorry to all the sushi chef out there i know i'm i'm, I'm weird i'm like not a common asian but I don't like rice that much. You know, to me, rice is a side dish, not the main dish. What? But now I can see why it's like that. That's probably why I ate way too much rice when I was little. I, I don't really get upset easily, but you know, I get you know, a few times <laughs> I get upset is when they don't give me enough rice, you know, compared to the side dish. I'm okay. The side dish is not enough and I get a lot more rice. I'm okay with that. But really? if I don't get enough rice and a lot more side dish, that's when I uh, start getting upset. Okay. You guys let us know who do you agree with. You guys like rice that much or is rice just like a side dish? Every time I eat ri something with the rice, I always just plan ahead. Like, okay. With <laughs> this side, this portion of the side, yeah, I should eat this pacing of the rice. That's how much I care about eating rice. He loves rice, yeah. So back to topic, my mom had my sister back in the other refugee camp. Uh -huh. My sister was about one month when we had brought her into this new camp. Uh -huh. So because, you know, my mom had her, they, they gave us one of those like boiling pots. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like to boil water. So it wasn't uh, really... For the milk? 
Right. Yeah. So to warm up stuff that yeah. we need. Um, so there was, it was helpful. I remember it was, it's really weird, but I remember one of my favorite things to eat, uh, back at that camp was just rice, hot water and soy sauce. For some reason that was so yummy to me and With my rice soup. Yes. A yeah. rice soup. It was so good. That's all I needed was just rice, uh, just hot water and soy sauce. I still, you know, sometimes I try to recreate it, but it's just not the same. I guess I was I in, in the moment. <laughs> How else you can make the rice, uh, hot water, and soy sauce? Maybe I was really hungry back then. You know what uh -huh, I mean? Yeah. So. The hunger is always a secret ingredient. Right. And my mom, too, to this day, she claimed, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm really short. My mom, to this day, claimed that the reason why I'm so much shorter than my sister um, it's because she thinks I just didn't have enough nutrients growing but up. Your other sister is as short as you are. <laughs> that's a different story, okay? My other sister is also short, but that's another reason, okay? okay. But your dad also is extremely short. Too. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for me though, right? I'm like the shortest person you know. Yeah, so every time I meet like fans, right, they're always surprised how short I am because they think I'm a really tall person. In the video, I usually with Loen or Ryan, where I look a lot taller in the relation to their height, but then I'm pretty short too. <laughs> it's so. because I'm short and Ryan's short. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, oh. It just makes you look tall. So when they see, when people see the whole family, like, oh, so you, the your whole family is short. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Oh, and another thing is in Malaysia, um, because of religious reason, we weren't allowed to eat pork. Oh. So because we're in the capital of Malaysia, you know, we're like in this camp where it's we're kind of fenced in. Uh -huh. But um, there's still other Malaysian citizens around. Uh -huh. Right. So a lot of them would come to the campsite outside the campsite. They can't come in. I keep saying campsite, but it's a refugee camp. So a lot of Malaysian citizens, right, they would come near the camp, but they can't actually go in because it's fenced. I'm sure it's illegal, but I heard my mom was saying that because we were so tired, you know, when you're there for a year and all you eat is chicken and fish after a while, you kind of want varieties. So what's happened is there's people outside the fence, uh -huh. right? You remember, we have different languages. We can't speak their language. Uh -huh. So we have to signal them, you know, like if you want to eat, a pork but if you want ear of a pork right you just oh, like point just to your <laughs> ear yeah if you, exactly if you want you know thigh of the pork then you just point to your thigh so and then you have to give them something in, in exchange right. right yeah so what happened is people would throw money over the fence uh -huh. and the other side would throw over the food <laughs> oh my gosh interesting <laughs> so um but the thing is because it's actually illegal to eat pork uh -huh. if you are caught uh -huh. they would shave your head what <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a girl or boy no they just sh shave your head that's a, as a punishment but if i'm tired of food i take that risk you i'll be okay it. if i if i you know my head is shaved but you're disrespecting right their religion i mean they let you stay here and you're kind yeah. of disrespecting of their rules and regulations so besides pork then what do they eat just chicken and, and fish I don't know. What, beef? Do they eat beef? Beef is know. really hard to, to, to raise, right? Like, I mean, the cow yeah. is just expensive. So. I don't remember beef. I just remember my mom telling me just chicken and fish. Gotcha. As uh, the main so that's source. That's thing. Loan doesn't like chicken, eating chicken that much either. <laughs> okay. All Everything these connects. Things. All the dots now it's connecting through this podcast. I never realized. Now Every time I want to eat healthy, right? I just always trying to eat only all the like, chickens and stuff. Loan always complains. Like, I hate eating chicken. <laughs> Makes sense now again. Okay, continue on. <laughs> so the place they had us stay at, um, in this place, it's also a hut. Can you imagine like a stage? So it's three walls, and it doesn't have that extra fourth wall. Oh, I see. I see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it's open, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's kind of raised a little bit. The reason why it's raised is because there's a lot of flooding and stuff that happens. Oh. And so um, the the floor is raised a little bit uh -huh. and then i just remember so like, uh, i remember I, I asked my mom too i remember so much water or river just flowing into the um the land where we live uh -huh. and she was like yes yeah, because there's a lot of flooding that happens there all the time and so that's why i'm like envisioning a lot of mud you know a lot of dirtiness like just puddle of water yeah. on the on the ground um 
And then also because we had no wall, that fourth wall, there's lots of mosquitoes that came on uh -huh. all the time when we sleep. And um, so we have to sleep with mosquitoes all the time. Oh, and one time, um, so my grandpa actually had a friend uh -huh. that lives in Hawaii. Okay. And she actually sent over $100 for us. Uh -huh. And so we used that money to buy one of those tent to keep mosquitoes away. Like those nets, uh -huh. those tents that have yeah. like really small nets so right, mosquitoes right, right. couldn't come in. Uh -huh. It was, I remember my mom and dad was so happy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're like, yes, mosquito free. <laughs> so to this day, um, we really appreciate that. And then when we had decided to move to Hawaii, uh -huh. my mom and dad really wanted to find her to say thank you. Oh. The problem was we had lost in touch over the years, so we don't know where she is in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, Hawaii has a multiple islands, so I don't know which island she lives. She's in this main island. Oh, who? Oh, yes. Yeah. So really? if you ever listen to us, we really want to connect with you and say um, thank you. And my dad was so funny. My dad was like, can you just knock on every single door in Hawaii and find her? Yeah, he thinks it's a small island. Yeah, maybe that's what he's used <laughs> to. So he thinks Hawaii itself is small. So on this island, there was a few memories that I remember. One of them, my sister still talk about it to this day. She would keep making fun of me. So my sister, she had recently um, used a restroom, right? She has recently peed. And then uh -huh. I have no idea why, right? I was like five years old. So my mom was like, hey, do you think do you think your sister would want to use the restroom again? And I said, no, she just peed, right? Why would she want to do it again? Mm -hmm. And so um, my mom was like, oh, you want to bet? And I said, okay, sure. So she had actually put my sister for some reason on top of my head. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mom was like, okay, well, I'm just going to count to 10, you know? And if nothing happens within 10 seconds, then you're good. Uh -huh. um, so I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Within that 10 seconds, my sister pooped on my head. <laughs> <laughs> so for some reason, she still brought it up to, to this day and make fun of me. Oh, my gosh. Now you've been peeing to poo. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it dramatized me enough where I still vaguely remember it. And then another memory that I remember was because it's a refugee camp, right? Um, we have to shut down our lights. So they're like lights out at 10. So uh -huh. every day we have to turn off all the lights that we had um, to conserve electricity, of course. Uh -huh. Also, but I just remember, right, because we're in the capital uh -huh. and I remember seeing lights. Because outside the camp, right, people, citizens were, you know, because they, they oh. yeah, they're able to keep their lights on at all yeah. hours. Yeah. So I remember just seeing outside of the campsite, I was like, but mommy, what do they get to keep their lights on and we don't? <laughs> a bunch of kids at the fence. Oh, the lights. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so that kind of leads to my another question. Uh, what kind of electric, like electronics did you have in, a, in the other camp? There was no electronics, no TV, no, no TV, microwave, no microwave. Only we only had that boiling pot. Oh my god! So we're god. able to use some sort of electricity, right? Uh huh. But yeah, nothing for uh, as a form of entertainment. You know, we just oh have to god. use nature as entertainment. <laughs> Got it. Wow. Yeah, no iPad for sure. No Game Boy. Yeah, kids here in America. Right, especially with our kids, they would not be able to survive. Well, they freak out if there is no Wi-Fi. So. <laughs> Wow, interesting. I guess that's a very different childhood right. <laughs> experience I mean, than mine. Yeah, I mean, you have to do what you have to do to survive. So after nearly a year there, um, they let us go to America. And we did have to borrow money. The flight wasn't free, right? Mm. So my dad had to apply to borrow the money of from a bank or something, uh -huh. right? We flew to America. And life in America was pretty rough growing up, too. You know, um, we imagine in Vietnam, we imagine life in, a, in America as like a paradise, right? It's everybody's dream in Vietnam to be able to live here in America. But when you come to America with nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Having to start over, like my dad had to work two jobs. You know, he worked in a factory during the weekday and on the weekends he had to work at a gas station mm -hmm. and there were many points where you know my my dad got robbed at the gas station yeah i remember yeah he was uh, somebody pointed the gun at him right right to get money and my mom too um 
you know, she had to stay home and take care of us. And it was not easy to take care of us, um, especially when we didn't know the language, you know, we didn't know uh -huh. how to speak English. The culture was different. Was there a Vietnamese community already around where you guys lived? Yeah, there was a small community around where we lived. So everybody did kind of help each other out. So uh -huh. that was kind of nice. But yeah, it was, I, you know, my childhood was a, a different, a whole story on its own. I had a really hard time adjusting to um, American school, right? Because when I first come here, I went straight to first grade with no, without knowing any English or anything. So uh -huh. it was really rough. A surprise to me because I thought, you know, when you come to U.S. when you're young like that, then you adjust quicker. And I came here when I was 15 and right. I had a really difficult time too, but I figured if you come earlier, it's, it's I mean, I mean, you speak fine, English fine with no accent. So I'm assuming it was kind of right timing to come to U.S. For me, it was I, I was a little too late to come right. to U.S. I, I think it depends, right? Because my um, my cousin came over to the U.S. He started fourth grade. Uh -huh. And I, I love my cousin. I don't, don't mean to disrespect him. But he comes here in third grade, starting fourth grade. He had a really difficult time because even then, you know, I think his first language, his first culture is still in Vietnam. You know, uh -huh. he still have the accent. And so it was, I'm pretty sure he has his own story of how difficult it was for him to grow up here in a foreign country as well. But for me, I was surrounded with just my parents who only speak Vietnamese. Uh -huh. So even, even though if I learn, you know, how to speak English in school at home, I'm still, I still have to speak Vietnamese to my parents, right? Like we still eat Vietnamese food. So the culture of, of Vietnam is still with me and not the American culture. Uh -huh. But it's a different story. <laughs> so now that we got to America, my dad was able to save money and to apply. So where like, so he had brought a lot of his um, brothers and sister over uh -huh. from Vietnam and they didn't have to go through the hardship like we did. Uh -huh. You know, we just apply, but it does take a long time. It takes, when I say long, it takes like seven, eight years mm. um, for, because there's just so much paperwork that you have to go through and so many people want to come to America that I think it just takes that long for them to process all, to, to process the paperwork. Gotcha. So they're able to come here without having to escape Vietnam, right? They come here the legal way. Mm -hmm. My mom, she still is waiting for some of her sisters and brothers to come. A lot of them are still in Vietnam. My mom applied for them to come and actually... It was actually in 2021 that they're supposed to come. Mm -hmm. But guess what happened? It's the Afghan stuff? COVID. Oh, sorry. COVID. So because of COVID, you know, the program got shut down. It's, it's on pause right now. So we don't know when it's going to be backed up for them to come. So hopefully uh, soon. I see. Yeah, hopefully 2022 and they bring everything back. But yeah, right now, we even us, we cannot travel around. So right. it makes sense. But that now, now it makes sense the why the, the families among Vietnamese uh, families in the U.S. And also, I feel like a Chinese family, too. They're all really close to each other. Uh, those families live in, in, in the U.S. Compared to us, Japanese, mm -hmm. we all kind of more independent. But now I see why, because you guys all immigrated together and then bring in more families into the U.S. So that's why you guys supporting each other. Right, so we kind of understand how hard it is to live there, you know, so we want to provide like a better life for our remaining family members. Whew. For me, when I immigrated to the U.S., I just bought a ticket and, and then fly over here, <laughs> so it's whole different. It's mine's going to finish in one minute. Well, I'm sure you had hardships too. Yeah, yeah, coming that here in struggles. 15, but yeah. Yeah. But the process of coming here was not as difficult <laughs> as you did. Was not an 18 months trip? No, no, it was a one day trip. <laughs> so by the year 2000, I heard that over 1 million people is able to come to America, right? Like they, they escape and come to America by boat. A 1 million Vietnamese immigrants have lived here. So that's like 11% of the population has able to um, go on this dangerous journey against all odds, you know, and make it here. 
and I feel very blessed and lucky that I'm able to be one of them. So if you guys are out there, you guys are, you know, a boat people like me, um, just want to say hi. Others out there who also, you know, are in similar situ situation, again, just want to say hi. You're not alone. And um, yeah, we really want to hear your story, too, because I'm sure everybody has their own struggles. Right. Yeah, even when we were moving into Hawaii, we've met a few people that was also a people who came from Vietnam through boat too. And it was really inspirational hearing their story too. So we'd love to hear your story too in the comment below. So yeah, that concludes my story of how I got to America. I would like to do another episode on just, you know, my life here as an immigrant. Because it's, you know, it wasn't, like I mentioned, it wasn't easy for me growing up here. There's lots of ups. But there's also many downs and experiences that, you know, I think it's kind of fun to share with you guys. Mm -hmm. But before we end the video, you know, I don't know if you guys really care, but we're doing the sticky words of the day. Because we're sticking with it. Exactly. Today's word is actually America. Um, there's so many people, you know, would risk everything to come here to America, right? People always say America is... Um, Land of hope. Yeah, land of land freedom. Of exactly. Yeah. American dream. So America in Vietnamese is me. People always say, I want to go and uh, D me. D means to go. Uh -huh. You know, so people always like, I want to go to America. I want to go to me. It sounds so different from the original yeah. word. Is there like a different meaning to it? Me? Me? No, it's just how we say America. Huh. The me. The me. <laughs> Is that what the, the Vietnamese people like, like hear like when we say America? Just I don't know. Huh. But it's different too, right? Because like you don't say Japan, you know, you say Nihon. Nihon, right? Nihon. As we learned in previous episode, if you guys are watching. Yeah, that, so. that, I don't get it either. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, China is different too. Yeah, you're right. right. Uh, in America in Japanese is America. So America, America with an accent. Yeah, America. America. <laughs> America. <laughs> That's why now you see why a lot of Japanese people have an issue with, like, have a difficult time with the uh, pronunciation because we say a similar English word, but then with an accent. So I'm so used to it saying it that way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So that's why. <laughs> Interesting. Hey, every culture is different. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you for watching this episode of the Stick With Kaji podcast. If you like it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and let us know what other topics that we should talk about. For now, thank you for watching. Bye. Bye, stickies. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to say have a fantastic day. Oh, I didn't know we always say that. <laughs> well, at least I always say it, so I want to keep it. Have a fantastic day, you guys. Bye. Bye.